Hi, I'm Bruce Aisha, and this video I'm going to be looking at the sampler track in Cubase. So I'm going to start by opening the media bay, and I'm going to look and listen to a loop or a bit of audio. I'm just using the content that comes with Steinberg Cubase at the moment. I quite like this lo-fi Rhodes. And if I was going to use it as a loop, as an audio loop in Cubase, I'd right mouse click and I could use insert into project or I could just drag it into the project. But this time I'm going to choose create sampler track. Press the button. I'm going to close the media bay window and you notice something happening in the background there. Now a track has been created and this track is the sampler track or a sampler track. And when I press the keyboard, You'll notice what it's doing, it's actually triggering that sample. So not as a loop, in effect, it's just playing it from the start. And it's changed the pitch depending on what I play, what notes I play. Now, it's not a fully featured sampler, the sampler track in Cubase, but it does allow you to do some interesting things if you just want to trigger elements of a piece of sound. What I could do here is I can actually drag the sample start and actually choose it to only play this section, and I'm going to drag that sample end. So what I've got here is... So you can see I'm just playing back a little bit of sample. Let's choose a very short loop. Get the metronome going. And you can see what I've done, I've played the notes on the keyboard and it's actually created those MIDI notes in this part here. I can go into this, I can choose select all, I can select all of them and I'm going to quantize them. Let's choose it as a straight 16th. And there we are, it's pushed them into the grid and you can see, we take the metronome off. I can play around and edit the notes in the same way I would do any other piece of MIDI, but this time it's actually triggering that audio. I can add more notes. I can go back to the sampler track. And actually there are a whole bunch of controls where I can actually manipulate what's going on, so I can change the overall pitch. I've got an amp uh, envelope and also the amp controls which change the volume. So if I click on this, I can choose the release time much longer. I can make it much shorter so it cuts off much more abruptly. There is a pitch envelope as well if I want to change the pitch over time as each time the note's pressed. I can choose to loop the sample internally and do all kinds of other stuff. Let's enable the filter. Add a bit of drive, a bit of resonance. I'm going to change that amp envelope so it's a little bit, got a little bit of a release to it. And actually I'm getting a little bit of a click there, so I'm going to go back to this actually listen to it, I'm going to select it so I actually snap to zero crossing. And what this will do, it means that when I choose that start point, it will find a more suitable point where the audio isn't midway through a waveform and it should glitch less. Try that. Push the attack up a little bit, very slightly. I go to the filter and I can choose a filter envelope. I'm going to bring the sustain down. Bring the cutoff down. And 
and change the amount of the envelope. So you can see it's very easy to get something going quite quickly from a basic audio loop. I can chop something out and actually manipulate it to get it going uh, and actually use it as a new musical idea in Cubase. So in this video, we looked at using the sampler track, how we loaded up the media bay, grabbed an audio loop and used, used it to create a sampler track automatically. And straight away, I could play the keyboard and it would actually trigger that piece of audio. And I could start manipulating the audio within the sampler track to choose a little bit to play and even manipulate it as far as filtering, an amp envelope, and even a pitch envelope if I wanted to.